Now, hi guys. I'm just sitting in a little spot, um, not too far from my house. Just having a smoke. Smoking, uh, can you see that? Um, one of my Russian made pipes. Uh, Vladimir Grishukin. Mm. I believe it's the maker. Well, This is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time. Um, and as I explain, um, you'll understand why. Uh, I haven't made it until now. Mm. Uh, Doug Owen, he's, uh, he, he doesn't make videos, uh, but he's, he, um, watches and comments and, um, and he owns a small tobacco shop up in Postbo, uh, Washington, up, up near Seattle, um, which if you haven't, uh, ever visited, you should, um, cargo hold. Anyways, he reminded me recently um, that I needed to, um, yeah, get this video completed, but I didn't want to do it uh, in this way, but uh, as you'll see, um, has to be now this way. So Portland is lucky enough to have had uh, a master tobacconist, uh, a master blender. Uh, here in the city uh, for quite some time. Uh, his name's Steve Books. He started blending, um, I think, around the age 11 um, with various families here uh, in the area. He did uh, quite a few uh, apprenticeships um, with the families. I think they were 10 year apprenticeships. Um, and he started blending in the early 1960s, I believe. Uh, I think there were two or three different families he um, blended with and was able to get apprenticeships with. And then pretty early on, he was able to, or he ran into uh, Lord Kamoy uh, at the House of, uh, House of Kamoy, House of London. And uh, got involved with his huge factory there and uh, Lord Kamoy um, began teaching him uh, more of the craft, more of the art of blending. And so he had about, a, I think, a five-year apprenticeship with him and then I think worked, worked for him in total about eight years, I believe something like that. So 
So he was really a skilled craftsman, uh, a true artist of uh, blending. And very experienced. Uh, he really knew his stuff. So, he also um, worked at Rich's Tobacco Shop uh, here in Portland years ago and blended for them. And uh, that's where Doug knew him, I believe. And then uh, at some point he uh, opened his own shop, his own tobacco shop um, in a small in a small town just uh, south of Portland in Oregon City, and um, started blending um, for himself his own blends and um, incorporating some of the older blends um, from his past. So the shop was called uh, House of Calabash. And then uh, fairly recently, he started falling sick and decided to close his shop um, at the, the physical site. And then uh, he just had his um, the blends available for online uh, purchase. Yeah, so um, I visited his shop before it closed many times and was able to talk with Steve. Uh, he's always a very interesting guy to talk with. Always had many good stories to tell. Very knowledgeable about tobacco and, and blending ingredients, recipes. Uh, it was just always very interesting to talk with him. So, and many of you know that years ago I had, you know, I was um, making um, pipe videos and then I stopped making them for quite a few years. Um, and then before I started up again uh, about a year ago. I had wanted to um, always do a video um, at the shop there, the House of Calabash. And um, I just, for one reason or another, I just never got to it, never got around to it. Um, and then, um, then he closed the shop and it wasn't possible to do that anymore. But then I thought, um, when I start making videos again, um, I could at least, uh, have an interview with him. Uh, just something something of interest um, because he is uh, or should I say was uh, a master blender and um, experienced tobacconist so um, Steve was also a part um, of the Portland uh, Pipe Club here in Portland and um, 
it was always good to see him there um, when he could make it and talk with him. Um, enjoyed seeing seeing him there. And I had just started uh, myself coming back to uh, the Pipe Club earlier this year. Uh, I had taken a, f a few years off um, from attending for various reasons uh, and just started back again. Um, so, um, as I mentioned before, uh, he was getting sick. And... Um, shut down a shop and then about a month ago sadly uh, Steve passed and um, then it became uh, impossible to do this video that I've been kind of wanting to do or had in my mind to do for quite some time uh, and that's why I'm having to do it in this way. But, um, but I still wanted to say something uh, about him, um, about his tobaccos, um, and a little bit about his life. Um, so. I've smoked quite a few of his tobaccos, and they're very good, but I wanted to show you just just a couple of them, if I can. Put the pipe. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, he has quite a few, quite a few blends, um, all different types. He really, he really knew his stuff. Uh, so let me show you. I just have a few here. Uh, so the first one is called uh, Wild Rose, if you can see that. So I have these jarred up now, but um, this is his handwriting, uh, by the way. This is how you would get it labeled. Um, and then he would um, put the blends uh, in a bag uh, with this type of label on it. And then um, I just took the labels off and jarred them up. So, uh, you know, of course, to preserve them. Uh, so Wild Rose. Uh, this is um, a white burly uh, red Virginia. And three, three types of uh, Turkish Orientals. Um, and it's considered an aromatic. Uh, now when... Um, now, when you think of these these blends that that he would do that were aromatics that he would call aromatics, um, they're they're in the old world, um, or I should say, perhaps traditional um, style aromatics. Um, he he didn't use chemicals or. Um, perhaps um, unnatural type ingredients. Everything he used was natural and um, didn't have that, that real gloopy or chemical sense to them in any way. So his aromatics were, were naturally aromatic um, with different ingredients that he'd put in and, and the quality of the tobacco leaf that he would use and they would work together to uh, to give a, a, a real sense of an aromatic. And when you say that, or, and when you smoke it, you, you get a sense that they're uh, an aromatic in a different sense. Um, but this one's considered an aromatic, has kind of a floral essence. Uh, the second one that I have is um, perhaps one of his most smoked, not sure, but it's a grandfather's own. This is another um, blend that's considered an aromatic. Um, it's one of his first blends um, that he um, blended for his um, grandfather years ago. Um, let's see if I can show you the, you know, I don't know if you can see the tobacco in there or not. You know. 
anyways, all of these are, and most of his blends were just kind of a, a loose, a loose ribbon, varied cut, um, very natural type cut tobacco. And so that one, um, is aromatic, uh, with cocoa, chocolate, um, vanilla and brown sugar kind of sweetness uh, to it. Uh, very good. Yeah. One of my favorites that I've smoked, um, from his. And the third one that I have is, um, and this is what I'm smoking now today. It's Irishman's five o'clock. So yeah, these are all his, his labels. This is what his labeling would look like. Um, hopefully you can see that. All right. And this one is a, is a, a really good solid, what we would call English style or Balkan blend. It's, um, Latakia, um, Oriental and Virginia. And it's very strong on the Latakia and the Turkish. So it really has a full rich flavor, um, for a Balkan style, uh, tobacco. Uh, and again, really good, uh, tobacco, tobacco one, one that I've smoked. So perhaps you're, um, you're, you're wondering, are these tobaccos available, um, uh, for anyone? Um, they used to be that. And now, um, it's a bit, um, it's a bit in question, but it's all up to, or at least all in the hands of his daughter now, Eva books. So she seems real determined to, um, to carry on his legacy, to, um, continue, um, his work. She, um, blended with him, of course, from a very early age and, um, knows and has his recipes and, um, seems determined to, um, continue, um, the work that he was doing, uh, and to, to make, you know, these blends, uh, still available, um, for those that wish to try them. Uh, perhaps, not sure about this, but perhaps uh, sometime soon, or, or sometime at least, um, I could do a, a, a video uh, with Eva, um, perhaps a short interview or something, perhaps get some kind of an update on that um, for anyone that's interested um, in that. So that's it. Just wanted to do this in case uh, anyone was interested. Um, perhaps you found uh, that somewhat um, uh, interesting. Perhaps you'd never heard of uh, Steve Book's Tobacco, House of Calabash. Uh, really good quality tobacco blends um, and a really great guy. Um, really interesting to talk with and um, just very sorry that I had to do the, the video in this way and didn't get a chance to um, interview him in person or show his shop. His shop was um, just a really interesting shop to go into because it was, it really felt like you were um, back into the 19th century, um, you know, somewhere that you would imagine an old traditional style tobacconist. And um, you just really get a sense of, you know, what the traditional tobacconist would do. He would blend all of his blends right there. Um, I mean, he would be blending them right in front of you um, as, you know, he was telling a story or you were asking him questions or whatever. And uh, so anyways, hope you found that some somewhat interesting or at least found something of interest there. Uh, and so 
to Eva, if you're watching this, and to all Steve's family, um, may you find strength in uh, the remembrance of him and uh, in the carrying on of his legacy. And to everyone else, thank you and hope you're well. Uh, take care and we'll see you again. Yeah, guys, just a quick addendum uh, before I leave you. Uh, I also wanted to mention that there is a uh, there's a short video uh, here on YouTube, um, just a quick e excerpt from an interview uh, that I think uh, Steve Steve Book's daughter put together, Eva, uh, an interview, just a, a short clip from an interview with him. And I want to put that link uh, down below so you can check that out um, if you're interested. So, just forgot to mention that. So, you guys take care.